All right, my good people. Welcome to the 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 trial. Welcome to the gauntlet. Welcome to the test to to see what you're really made of. Can you kill off some of the greatest games of all time? We shall be putting it to the test here today. Joined by Loon, we are going to be going from 2010 to 2015. I put together four games for each year, and I gotta say, right out the gate, I'm stealing this concept from the uh, Dicky Dine show. They did this with albums. I think they went from 2000 all the way up to today. Like they they did a much longer. We're gonna we're gonna chop it down a little bit, and we'll we'll probably come back to this, circle back to this if you guys enjoy it. I'll have every, everything on the screen for you to be able to follow along at home if you would like to play as well. Loon, uh, how you how you feeling about this, man? I mean, I've got the uh, the pictures here, and you you were uh, very tough. <laughs> these decisions, oh boy! <laughs> so I literally just sent these to Loon two seconds ago. So I'm I'm throwing this to him on the fly. I want to get some real time reactions here as we go through these. I didn't want to give him too much time to prepare, but like I said, I'll have all of this on the screen for you all to see right now as well and to make your picks at home if you would like to. So we're starting with 2010 and you're you're keeping one game of the four on the screen right now. The four games are Alan Wake, Mass Effect 2, Bioshock and Red Dead Redemption. Now if you kill one of these games, they are gone forever. So you got to you got to be smart with your selections here, Loon. What you thinking for for 2010? What's your what's your thought process when looking at these four titles? Ooh. I mean, so it's, it's I'm selecting one and killing three, right? Selecting one, killing three, and actually, let's make it fun. Let's 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 uh, be a little bit more brutal. Let's kill off each one until we get to our final. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, Bioshock, go. Okay, Bioshock. Like I'm sorry, like it's it's a good game, but it it's not what I want. <laughs> okay. I will kill Alan Wake. Alan Wake will be my first kill. I enjoy it. I'll I'll take everything else on this list over it. So Bioshock gone for you, Alan Wake gone for me. What is your second kill? Man, that's a really good set of games. Um, so I'm able to eliminate Alan Wake as well, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I think, like, realistic, like, I really love Red Dead Redemption, but I... Man, Remedy, they're just my baby as well. <sighs> so I'd probably dump Red Dead. Okay, so you're knocking off Bioshock and Red Dead. I've got Alan yeah. Wake knocked off. I will... God. So here's my dilemma. I haven't finished Red Dead 1 yet. I'm like <laughs> 20 plus hours into it. And I'm like uh, halfway through the game. And I don't know why I haven't finished it. I think something else just came out and, and caught my attention. I, I, it, there's, it's inexcusable that I haven't finished that game because I really enjoyed it. But I, to be fair, I went back and played it after Red Dead 2. And I love Red Dead 2, and I just feel like I'm playing an inferior version the entire time. So I'm going to have to, my second cut is going to have to go to Red Dead Redemption 1, man. I I, I I love it, but yeah, I'm Alan Wake and Red Dead are my are my cuts. Well, there's only one correct choice as to what goes through and lives, and uh, that's Alan Wake's going to have to fall on a sword so that Mass Effect 2 can walk. <laughs> so yeah i think we're we're in a very uh a very similar God, mass effect 2 is so damn good <laughs> so you're you're taking you're taking mass effect 2 yeah every day of the week yeah i as well will be taking mass effect 2 and i'm gonna jot this down so that the people at home can see it Loon for Mass Effect 2. I'm already fucking shit up here. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. I think we got it. 
Oh boy, it's still fucking up. I just need to add a six here. There we go. So you're going Mass Effect 2. I'm going Mass Effect 2 as well. All right. So now we go on in to the year 2011. And you see it on the screen. Dark Souls 1, Deus Ex Human Revolution, Skyrim, and Arkham City. Loon, what is your first cut? Skyrim. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't even need to hesitate on that. You you everybody knows I'm not the biggest like Bethesda fan. Yeah. I think it's very, very overrated Skyrim. So I, I'll happily live without that ever existing. Yeah, you know, honestly, I'm I'm gonna make two cuts at once. Souls and Skyrim, Dark Souls and Skyrim. I'm cutting both of those. To me, it's this is a two, this is a two horse race. It's between human revolution and Arkham City for me, without a doubt. My soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um Arkham City gets cut for me. Okay. So you're down to human revolution and dark souls? Which is a really brutal. Oh uh, man, Human Revolution is so good. It's incredible. <sighs> I I'm gonna give this you my is logic. So difficult. I'm gonna give you my my logic here. I'm gonna go with Human Revolution because I'm an I'm in. Uh, for me, Arkham Asylum is the pinnacle. I, I gotta, I'm gonna go Human Revolution because if I can still have Asylum, I can still have Sid or uh, Arkham Knight. Which uh, I guess could you really have Arkham Knight without City? Regardless, if I can still have Asylum, I'm fine with taking Human Revolution for 2011 for my second pick. It is so paralyzing of a choice to make. You're between oh, Dark Souls and the, Human Revolution. Yeah. Right? And they're two completely polar opposites of one another, but they're so damn good. I'm I'm gonna have to dump Deus Ex. Okay. Respect. And the, the, my my full process of that is the only reason that got edged out is because I ran into bugs in Deus Ex. I yeah. think it it when I was going through the DLC, it didn't load any textures at all. So it was just unplayable. So 2012 is... <laughs> this is a really, really tough one for me. We have Far Cry 3, Sleeping Dogs, Max Payne 3, and Diablo 3. A lot of threes, actually. Three threes. Um, I shouldn't say it's really tough. I know my pick, but... This is a this is a sleeper year, 2012, and there were some other really great games that I didn't throw in here. Um, for me, Diablo three is an easy elimination for my first cut. What's your I, What's your I'd first expect. cut? Um, man, all of these are really important games. I would dumb Far Cry three. Okay. So now we have Sleeping Dogs, Max Payne 3, and Diablo 3 for you, and I have replaced Diablo 3 with Far Cry 3. I think I would dump Far Cry 3 as my ne Ooh. My my full pro the, the thing I'll give you, maybe it'll tip you over. They really underutilized boss. Let's be honest. Yeah. He I dips so quick. He does, but I still think even regardless, that open world is incredible. And the way that like we saw the uh, rise of Dishonored and Prey and all this and that, I don't think Far Cry 3 gets enough credit for really allowing this totally free way of playing the game with so many different possibilities and so many options for how you tackle missions. And like, I'm not saying it's an immersive sim open, open world game, but it's somewhere in that realm 
And I don't know. I, I just thought the game oh, was so incredible. the count of radio talents. <laughs> yeah. I I mean I I'm gonna cut Far Cry three, but that's that's actually really, really damn tough it for is, me. No, it is this is a really this is one of the tougher ones for sure. I I'll go ahead I'll I'll give you my answer. My answer is sleeping dogs, but like I I would Max Payne 3 and Far Cry 3 are fucking great games. If they weren't put up against Sleeping Dogs, that would be, yeah. In pretty much any other year, this would be tough. But with Sleeping Dogs, it's one of my favorite games of all time. So Sleeping Dogs is going to be my my third selection for, you know, for 2012 here. Sleeping Dogs is my is my pick. Okay, well, I will cross off Max Payne 3. Okay. And so you're left with Diablo three and Sleeping Dogs right now, right? And I think you're gonna be surprised because I'm I'm gonna cross off Sleeping Dogs. Nice. And it's because like how important this game was for me, of not only from like an enjoyment standpoint, but playing with like friends as well. Like we all did. We had several runs of like level seventy hardcore characters and doing like everything that like that's one of the few games I've hundred percent. I've done everything that game has to offer, essentially, and it's really damn good. Yeah, it. I actually I played Diablo three with a buddy as well, and and I did enjoy my time with. I'm just not I'm not very much a Diablo guy, but no doubt I mean Diablo three was, it was a behemoth. It was a juggernaut when it released, and you know it it was a juggernaut all the way up until Diablo four, um, but twenty thirteen. Touched Diablo 4 and went back to Diablo 3. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but 2013, man, this is a fucking heavy. They're two back to back, pretty heavy hitting years. Uh, with 2011 as well. Uh, honestly, th- the whole stretch, uh, except for the year after 2013, but this entire stretch was a really good, a really good run. We have The Last of Us, Grand Theft Auto 5, Bioshock Infinite, and Dragon's Dogma. So. Those are our four selections for 2013. What is going to be your first cut, Loon? I'm I'm just going to keep dogging Bioshock. I'm sorry. It's going to be infinite. Okay, wow. Uh, don't get me wrong. It's a really, really fun first-person shooter, but these other three games were way more impressive to me. Yeah. Because like you're talking... I, I get Bioshock Infinite, but you're talking like Deus Ex came out before Bioshock Infinite. So that resonates a lot more with me than Bioshock Infinite. I haven't really had the chance to talk about Bioshock Infinite on the channel yet. I finished it this year and it might be my favorite first person shooter of all time. Like I Damn, uh, that's really yeah, that's really high praise. Dude, I don't think it even gets into the top five of mine. Those rails and shit, like that is so unbelievably fun to me. And the way that you can have, you know, you can make choices on the battlefield, like the strategic elements where you can set up different, you know, okay, I'm going to get a turret set up right here because of this reason, or I'm going to get, you know, uh, I'm going to take cover over here, set up this little shielded area. And like, there's so many different elements. Okay. There's a sniper up there. So I need to get right here. I'm going to set this. Like there, there's a lot of strategy going on in those. And I know people kind of get bummed out on Bioshock Infinite because it is more of like straight up first person shooter balls to the wall action. But man, I, I still thought the story was really strong. I, I love, Bi- I think it's probably my, I'll say it's the most fun I've ever had with a first person shooter in combat without a doubt. Um, I, I would maybe take, Wolfenstein New Order story. I would maybe take Bioshock One story over Infinite, but I love the combat in Bioshock out, Infinite. Out of curiosity, because you said it's the most fun. Have you touched Doom Eternal yet? Yeah, I played a little bit of Doom Eternal. I, I, I couldn't really get into it, but I, I didn't give it enough time to really sit with it and try. I, I played it for like an hour or so, and I was just like, ah, eh, I, I, it's, I don't love the setting as much 
it's very good. But what I will say, that it had like two DLC story things, like part one, part two. That part two boss, oh my god! For a first person game, it was incredible. Really, I didn't think it could be like that. I didn't think that could be possible, in like a first person shooter, to have a boss where it has like that much like complexity to it. I need to go back and give it Crazy. a fair shake. I, uh, I, I've just, I, I have a hard time whenever there's not like a front facing story immediately. I kind of have a hard time wanting to continue on just with the gameplay loop, yeah. but I need to go back and try to really give it a fair shake. But, um, yeah. So your first cuts, Bioshock infinite. So here's the difficult thing. If we cut, if I cut dragon's dogma, does that mean I also cut Dragon's Dogma 2? You know what I mean? Like, if Dragon's Dogma 1 doesn't I mean, exist, that's what I was hesitant about, but you kind of, in the previous one, you was like, well, I get this next one. So uh, <laughs> I, we will allow the sequel. That can be the, the number one. That can be the first game. <laughs> well, well, I mean, and, and that's the thing, Luna, is it kind of should be. Dragon's Dogma 2 kind of should be <laughs> Dragon's Dogma 1. You know, it's following a very similar story arc. And so I don't know, like I would kind of just, I'd be a-okay with Dragon's Dogma 1 going away forever and Dragon's Dogma 2 being the Dragon's Dogma, the one and only Dragon's Dogma. I don't, I, I so I, I'm fine with cutting Dragon. The Dragon's Dogma 1 will be my first cut. Well, I guess we'll back to back and I'll, uh, I'll uh, copy that. I will say it's unfortunate to lose the Dark Arisen side of the first game. That was a really good addition. But yeah, Dragon's Dogma gets cut. I will cut. So now I'm down to GTA 5, Tilu, and Infinite. Bioshock Infinite. Oh my god. Uh, do you have an easy cut lined up? Because I really do not know what the fuck I'm going to cut here. So you're down to T. Lou and GTA Five, right? Yeah. Mm. Damn, I, I, dude, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> so I, I, I'll, I'll once again, I'll go ahead and I, I gotta quit. I'm, I'm, I'm spoiling the damn end here. My winner is The Last of Us. I'm taking The Last of Us, it, and kind of easily. But I don't know which of the two between Bioshock and GTA Five. I don't know which I would cut first. I kind of think I would cut GTA would... Five. Really? Yeah. Holy hell! Because I think every Grand Theft Auto before it was kind of better. Damn. Or at least more interesting to me personally. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong. It's it didn't. Reson, I'm the the thing I'm thinking about is just how important the game, is. like every Rockstar game that comes out, kind of pushes it. Yeah, but this is coming from somebody who dumped Red Dead very early <laughs> as well. So, yeah, hey, it's I mean your... the last this this for me as well. The last I'd be cutting GTA Five. Okay, so you you enjoy the Last of Us as well? Yeah. Oh damn! I honestly I didn't I didn't even know that. Yep, yeah, um, big fan of Uncharted as a series. I liked both The Last of Us games. Oh, so you're a fan of two? Yeah, I, I mean, questionable story choices, but you know, sure. you got to keep people on their toes, I guess. But um, I would say I probably prefer two to one. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's some of the best gameplay ever. It's incredible. The the gameplay is is next level man um so you both of us locking in the last of us for 2013 and we're down to our final yeah don't say two. don't show sony no love guys <laughs> <laughs> so now we are moving on into 2014 <sighs> maybe maybe the worst year in video game history one of I, i'd like to lead it off go ahead Dark Souls 2 can get the hell out of him. Okay. That can be flicked off the face of the earth. Game is so bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not even going to really prolong this. To me, it's between Wolfenstein, The New Order, and Dragon Age Inquisition. I... 
I I'm gonna go Wolfenstein the New Order for for 2014. I think that that story is is god tier. Gameplay is incredibly fun, but I haven't returned to Inquisition in a long ass time. So I kind of wonder Ooh. if what's that? I mean, I have. Oh, have you? Yeah. Does it hold up? Mm, it's aged as well as like a herring under a floorboard. <laughs> um, but I still love it all the same for what it is. The it's, old... it's just it's the thing of being a Bioware fan. We just yeah. we accept what we get, guys. The thing, <laughs> the only thing I really have strong memory of with Inquisition is that combat being like just. I was so surprised that there was zero complexity to that combat system at all. Like it was literally just like you, you did nothing but press whatever, whatever the attack square, or whatever. Like it, it was wildly uninspired um, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a little bit because I play when I went back and replayed it, I played on the hardest difficulty. So yeah. I was going through with the, the objective of hundred percenting it. So you do have to be you. You're juggling all your party members when you're on that hardest difficulty. So you're needing to learn four groupings of abilities and how to use them uh, effectively and stuff. But yeah, it's uh, I think it would be the one that I would choose to to keep. In all honesty, just because I'm a hopeless Bioware fan. Well, I didn't I mean, really gel with isolation. The the story in Dragon Age Inquisition is still damn solid. I I my only thing the combat system I thought was just pretty simplified. Once again, I you know just played on the normal difficulty, but I thought the combat was pretty simplified. And I also thought the open world was very bland in Inquisition. So I think that I I just the linear design of Wolfenstein: The New Order it keeps everything feeling so goddamn fresh, but. I those would be my one and two for sure. Um, but I'm I'm gonna go Wolfenstein New Order, you're going Dragon Age Inquisition. Yeah, the the a little bit more praise here. The the areas that you visit were more cool from like a law perspective than an actual execution, like Valrio and stuff like that. Really cool areas. It's what's got me excited for Dragon Age 4, because they're hinting that we can go to Tavinna and stuff like that. And it's like please. I want to go there. I want to yeah. see these these cool pieces of lore that you've got written down in books and stuff like that. So, yeah. and then if they can really flesh out that combat, you know, obviously yeah. they're they're talking about being inspired by God of War, and man, if they could if they could somehow get sixty percent of that into a game with as much depth and complexity in the narrative as as a Dragon Age or a Bioware game. Like Hell holy yeah. shit, dude! Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, even like even if they matched Greedful, yeah, I'd be happy. Yeah. That's that's your bar, guys. Just Greedful. It's funny that you bring like that is kind of true. I would say I prefer Greedfall's combat over Dragon Age Inquisition. But the, <laughs> the cool thing, and I know this is a different, obviously, totally different series and with different gameplay mechanics, but. Mass Effect Andromeda, in my opinion, is the best yeah. Bioware combat ever. So if they're, and then supposedly I haven't played Anthem, but supposedly Anthem's combat is excellent as well. So they are, they're climbing, they're, they're, they're getting better and better, but we just need that, that Dragon's Dogma, if they can get Dragon's Dogma level combat in terms of, of, of course, they're not going to have as much, uh, emergent sort of crazy interaction that takes place but if they could just get to the point where like they have that just that level of combat in terms of the melee in terms of the sorcerer yep. build not including you know jumping on top of them if it's just yeah, the no base grappling and stuff the the finishes is what i want that, that's the thing that really way you You'd hit the Y or triangle on PlayStation and Dragon's Dog, bro. And it would, when they're on the prone on the ground and you like drive your sword, like that kind of meaty crunch. That's what right. we need. 
Well, dude, in like, you know, the thief build where you can, you grab the enemy, you drag them to you and you wide and you just drive that dagger straight through their head. Like they can do stuff like that. I know they, if they can't do that, then we, we need to reevaluate Bioware for <laughs> sure. It's not like that's some crazy complex, any third person action adventure games pulling shit like that off. So with that being said, we have quite a few third person action adventure games for our 2015 top four. And this is a, once again, an incredible, incredible year. We have The Witcher 3, Bloodborne, Mad Max, and Fallout <gasps> 4. I, I I really I love building up suspense, but for me, this is like not even close to close. I'm I already gonna, know what you're choosing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm it's going Fallout 4, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going the Witcher 3 by a country mile. Um yeah, it's not uh, even close. Uh, Mad Max fucking rules, dude. I still does. need to go back and finish it. It's so, so you sick. You never finished it? Uh-uh. Oh. Man, that, that sucks. I definitely got to go back to it. I, I loved what I played of it. I played it way too late. I've told you before, if I don't play a game when it comes out, I end up just like, I really struggle going back to them and, and finishing them, especially bigger games. I'll just like kind of jump in and be like, oh, I get what mm -hmm. it is. And then bounce out. But I, I need to finish Mad Max. It, it fucking ruled. Arkham Combat. Vehicular Combat. Like, dude, it's so sick. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll add a little bit more suspense. I will eliminate Fallout 4. Predictably. Then yeah. Mad Max. The Witcher and Bloodborne. You're down to the big dogs. I suspected you'd be down to these two. Man. So you're looking at all time great story versus all time great combat and world building. Look, man, Bloodborne is really, really good, but it doesn't have Gwen. So, <laughs> <laughs> like the that's that's the thing of it having even more importance to me is you not only created one of the best RPGs ever. You somehow created one of the greatest card games in two days. That's all they gave that person. It was a weekend. They were like, "We need a mini game. Can you like come up with it?" And the guy just sat there and was like, "Kind of like Magic: The Gathering and these kind of things. Let's just put like a random card game in The Witcher," and it just it took off. So yeah, I'm sorry, Bloodborne, but man, The Witcher is the goat. Well, Loon. I uh I just thought of an interesting little twist, a little cap to to put on this. No, you're this gonna game. you're gonna pit them all against each other, you sick bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Loon, your final oh. games are Mass Effect Two, <laughs> Dark Souls One, Diablo Three, The Last of Us, Dragon Age Inquisition, and The Witcher Three. Now you know what we're gonna even we're gonna make this even more painful. Mass Effect 2, Dark Souls, or Diablo 3? Which of those three are you taking? Did you repeat the list, sir? Mass Effect 2, yep. Dark Souls, and Diablo 3. Which of those three are you taking? And the other two go? Yeah, you take Mass one, of the other two. Mass Effect 2. Okay. I can, so... I can live without Dark Souls 1. Because Dark Souls 2 no longer exists, so I just get Dark Souls 3 immediately. So it's all good. <laughs> this isn't gonna look great on the screen here, but I think you'll I think people well, you know what actually we'll separate it even more. Uh we'll go. We got the we gotta do the editing. And I already see here. what you're doing here. You're splitting them up into freeze and then you're gonna head to head them last two. <laughs> <laughs> so Mass Effect 2 <laughs> moves on oh, for Loon. God. And now we have The Last of Us, Dragon Age Inquisition, and The Witcher 3. Which of those three are you taking? The Witcher. The Witcher 3 moves on. And now, Loon, you have. You know what? Hold up. I'll, I'll do mine. I don't want to. I won't throw all yeah, the pain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I won't throw all the pain on you. <laughs> Immediately. Okay, so my I have 
Mass Effect 2, Human Revolution, Sleeping Dogs, The Last of Us, Wolfenstein, The New Order, and The Witcher 3. So my first three, it's between Mass Effect 2, Human Revolution, and Sleeping Dogs. I... Ouch. <laughs> and, uh, that's tough. I'm taking Mass Effect 2. It's really not even that close for me. Uh, Sleeping Dogs is kind of, but Mass Effect 2 is like, I mean, the ultimate combination of a great third-person shooter and a great RPG. Um, then we go to The Last of Us, Wolfenstein, The New Order, and The Witcher 3. Jesus. I mean, Wolfenstein, The New Order is an easy cut, but The Last of Us and The Witcher 3 is fucking brutal. Oh my God, dude, I have not thought about this. What? Because it's the same. So I'm not crazy about The Witcher combat. I'm not all that wow, crazy really? about not so much, but I'm also not all that crazy about the last of us one's combat. No. Um, cause you'll, but, you got to remember as well. This is PS free last of us that we're talking about. Yeah. And like, but it, it, it so it, it really, that's the bummer is it comes down to one <laughs> thing. It comes down to the story and they're both like metal gear solid Two, Witcher three last of us. Those are like, my three, if I had to put, you know, a Mount Rushmore of stories together, those would be three of the four without a doubt. I would say we should do that at some point, some sort of Mount Rushmore. Anyways, <laughs> I will. Oh my God, dude, this is uh, I might have to cut this shit out. I don't, I really don't know. Like I need to sit here and think on this for a second. Um, <laughs> fuck it on the fly. I'm going The Last of Us. I'm going to go The Last of Us over, over The Witcher 3. I just think that in terms of like a story that kind of changed gaming forever, like in, in terms of a story that just hit so fucking hard on a different level. Yeah. And also I was kind of getting back into gaming when The Last of Us came out. And mm. I don't know if... If that game wouldn't have released, I don't know if I'd be as into gaming now as I am. So here we go, Loon. We go to the winner round where the final two shall exist. Need to know where you lie between Mass Effect 2 and The Witcher 3. And I'm in what you were just in moments ago. <laughs> God. I really, really love both of these series. Um, but I, I think the witch edges edges it for me because the the thing that I'm the every like thing that I'm trying to think of is the Mass Effect series is a trilogy. Right. Versus the Witcher trilogy. Versus what the spin-offs got from each game. What extra, like... I, I really don't... Like, Gwen is so important to me as to what it did and stuff. So, I'm, I'm really sorry, man. <laughs> but, uh, the... The Mass Effect 2 will be yeeted out the airlock. Yeah. Well, don't feel too sorry because Mass Effect 2 is taking it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking Mass Effect 2 over The Last of Us 1. Um, I, I just think that I, I still to this day don't think I've seen a game with as competent of combat and it like feeling, you know, like a Gears of War, a third person shooter, like a real third person shooter, but also being, a, I'm not saying the most complex RPG in the world, but an RPG with real role playing game systems. Also, yeah. like, like we just talked about with Dragon Age 4, Dreadwolf trying to combine God of War with Bioware storytelling. Mass Effect 2 kind of did that, combined Gears of War with Bioware storytelling. I mean, I don't know. I think that's such an accomplishment. I, I gotta, I'm gonna give my winner to Mass Effect 2. And kind of crazy looking at our winners, you know, two top tier 
action RPGs. I think we both kind of lean that direction as game players in general. Um, but yeah, dude, that that was that was a that was a fucking blast. We'll definitely have to circle back to this game because we could, you know, we could do. 2016 to 2020 we could do 2021 to 2025 we could do 20 you know 2000 to 2000 this could go on and on for decades <laughs> no and it's also I'd, I'd love to hear like people put their choices in the comments and stuff to see what they would choose out of these groupings and stuff like that because it, it's also the backstory as to what makes it important for you because you could be like I can look at this and be like yeah the last of us is a an incredible game for what it's done for like gaming as a whole but like there are other things that i got so much more enjoyment out of personally for sure so. yeah no that was that was a damn good time so let us know in the comments if you enjoyed it let us know in the comments your list from 2010 to 2015 15. i should have listed out the years here i just put numbers <laughs> it is what it is I hope y'all enjoy it. I'll have all this shit edited up on the screen for you to see. And yeah, man, y'all take it easy. Hope y'all have a good weekend. I think this will probably come out around Friday or so. So I hope y'all have a good week that leads into the weekend. Loon, yep. appreciate you for joining me, man. Thanks for having me. Goodbye. See you later.